another problem we have is with the government. They are not what they could be. What improvements are we going to make there? The, the government of Afghanistan will determine success or failure in the end. We can improve security. Afghan National Security Forces, coalition forces, we can improve security in areas. But if the government doesn't stand up and provide a level of legitimate government, governance, then it won't be durable and this won't be successful. They can do it. And it's not just national governance. It's not just what is put out of Kabul. It's what is formed at the local level. And it's, it's often a uh, combination of more traditional methods with tribal engagement and tribal uh, activities and also more westernized governance, governance that we might, uh, we might recognize comfortably. And it's a blending of the two. But this is the test. This is what must be uh, accomplished by the Afghan people. It can't be done by coalition. It can't be done by outsiders. We can monitor elections, but at the end of the day, the Afghans have got to root out unacceptable corruption and they've got to get acceptable, legitimate governance. Another issue you raised is making sure that the Afghans know that we're here to stay. Uh, perhaps something like what we did in Iraq? The most common question we are asked is, <coughs> are you going to stay? We'll go into an area and we'll be welcomed, and I think it's genuine, but they will ask the question, are you going to stay? And then they will wait to have that proven, not they won't accept the first answer. But when we say stay, they really would like the Afghan National Army and police to do it long term. And they, they're open about that. They, they say, coalition, we appreciate what you do. We would prefer more to have Afghans do it but they've got to build that capacity to do it enough. So we will have more locations. Now, I do think it's important to say that we also will adjust locations. We have done some of that. We'll pull out of some places where we can't accomplish certain activities and they're just not effective or they're, the risk is unacceptable for the gain, and we'll do that. Now, we'll make those kinds of decisions whenever we have to, but that's when an effort like this you have to do. General McChrystal, you've been here almost a year. How would you grade yourself? A year older. Um, <laughs> now I'm part of a uh, I'm part of a kind of extraordinary team, and the team is um, people largely who came back to this effort because they felt very strongly about it. So I think that team is getting its stride, and it's through the country. It's not just here in Kabul by any means. So I think that as part of that team, I feel very, very increasingly confident that we are establishing the personal relationships, the professional relationships, hopefully the credibility that allow this thing to go forward. If you were to talk to the troops that are here on the ground and those that are on their way, what is the most important thing that they need to know? I think they need to uh, focus on what we're doing here. If we think of war in a more conventional sense, we think of taking terrain or killing the enemy. And that's what we were trained to do. Mm -hmm. um, this is not that. This is a war for the people. It's not a war with the people. It's not a war around the people. Uh, it is a war for the people. It's both to protect them and then in that process to win their support for their government. If everything they do is first put against that measure, that objective, then I think that their actions um, will be most effective. You know, when I go out among the force, you see young privates, corporals, sergeants. It comes incredibly naturally very practically think and they establish that. And so all we really need to do is sort of loose them to do that, but first convince them that is what we're doing. How would you assess the skills of the Afghan security forces? Well, they, uh, they fight and die bravely. It's uh, for a young army and a young police force, if you think essentially that they had to begin again after 2001, uh, they're out there doing extraordinary things and the police die in greater numbers than anyone else on the battlefield. We, we talk about complaints with them, but police stand their ground and die on a daily basis. So I am less tolerant of some of the, uh, the talk about them. That said, they are immature organizations and what they need most is leader development because in our Army, Air Force and whatnot, we take for granted the non-commissioned officer corps. All of us were trained by sergeants from the day we started. And we were trained in everything. We trained technically, we were trained socially, we were trained as leaders. And until their organization could mature more, that isn't always there. 
And so it's much thinner. They have great leaders, but they don't have enough great leaders. And so what we've got to do is help them mature that. And uh, the partnering, we say Shana Bashana, which is shoulder to shoulder embedded partnering, is designed to give them partners as they grow and mature, as role models, as combat buddies and whatnot. What about the topic of corruption, especially among the police? Is that still a problem? Yeah, it is. And it's, uh, it's pervasive because if you think of corruption in its personal sense, if a young policeman is out and he gets paid, if he's in a, uh, an area of high threat, $245 a month, but part of his pay is immediately taken by his supervisor each month, not to save for him, just taken, then suddenly his belief in the system goes down and the likelihood that as he goes up, he'll develop the same process. Then you have a corrosive uh, level of corruption that kills the force. It, the corruption is, uh, is widespread. It's absolutely a cancer that will kill the, uh, the force if it's not dealt with. Uh, the leaders know that. Uh, corruption is the, uh, the greatest threat to the government of Afghanistan. It's greater, in my view, probably than the insurgency, although the insurgency is more immediate, more obvious. Corruption is more corrosive. Again, they know it, and they want to go after it. And we want to support them in every way we can. But it's, it is the single biggest challenge we have. And 